Mm-hmm. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And today's episode is friendship. And friends who fuck, and friends who fist, and friends who fight. Friends who kiss, friends who brush each other's hair, friends who diss, friends who make lists. Hey. Oh my God. <laughs> All right. Well, this is J Ho. This is Jay Northcott, also known as your hungover queen of the day. And I'm Alexander Jamal, um, Jesus's second son. Oh, I love that. And this week we just wanted to, we wanted to talk about this thing. It actually was me. I've been wanting to talk about this thing for a while because I have been trying to figure out what to do when you have friends that you want to fuck or friends that want to fuck you or just dealing with friends when you're a Virgo who likes to hang out in their room and watch Big Brother. Or the lines that are blurred between friends, friends with benefits, friends that strictly fuck, friends that want to fuck and then go to dinner after. (laughs) Quick icebreaker. Have either of you had friends with benefits? Always. Me too. No. What? I'm mad that you guys said always and then me too, but no, never, never once. Why not? Um, it's just, it's, it's, it's not in my character. Like I've, I've always associated with sex with like romance or straight up just like fucking. So blurring that line or actually, no, let me, let me flip it. Um, I value friendships. Like I value family. So to mix sex in it doesn't make sense to me. So it's like, I can't have sex with like my biological brother. And if I'm, if you and I are like best friends, that's how I see you. I see you like we are family, right? So the idea of crossing the line and having sex with, my very good friend is just slim to none. Um, mind you, my first gay experience was with my best friend. But <laughs> I fucking knew it, dude. Was that was that were you guys together like as best friends when you fucked, or were you? We didn't fuck, so I sucked his dick. Oh. But we we had a, like I I manipulated him, so I told him that in the event that Shocking. yeah, so like in the I forgot what it was. It had to do with pizza, but in the event that something happened with the pizza. Where it was like, if he was wrong, I sucked his dick. And if I was oh wrong, he sucked my dick. And of course, I was wrong, right? Like, nothing nothing could have happened that would have made me right, right? Um, so, of course, I was wrong. Then I sucked his soft penis uh-huh. <laughs> for a nice, a nice ten, 10 minutes for like his soft, very soft penis. And then I, I don't think we were friends after that anymore, but oh, no. <laughs> Um, can you tell me about one of your friends with benefits stories? Uh, yeah. So I have had a bunch of friends with benefits only because um, I like the sort of transaction, if you will. Like, <clears throat> these are people that I would go to strictly to, you know, get it done. Mm-hmm. And then after I know that, like, it's nothing really has to happen. I don't really have to entertain the conversation or have to really like hang out with them. It's just like, we're getting it in and okay, well, see you next month. So you guys weren't friends beforehand or afterhand after fucking? No, because in my mind, like friends with benefits is more of like a title. Like you can be friends with benefits with somebody you just met. Right. They don't necessarily have to be like a lifelong friend that you have a whole bunch of history with. Right. Like you actually don't have to like them. No. Kind of like when you're doing a podcast with. You know. <laughs> I just don't really like J Ho that much. Yeah. Well, get used to it. Um, I think that my friends with benefits. Just so you know, I, I already have someone coming next week for a trial run. <laughs> <laughs> Name like K Ho. <laughs> Um, you know so- what I want to talk about? Squarespace. <laughs> you know what I want to talk about? Just kidding. Okay. Um, so I was thinking. I was thinking about this uh, recently. That I I have friends that I'm quite good friends with that I still have sex with, and I think what always happens is like I am like quite a flirty person. So like I like flirting with my friends, and they make me feel comfy and cozy. And like I sometimes don't know where that line is. You know, I think that like. A lot of people can like cuddle with their friends and it not be like super gay, like <laughs> I mean like super sexual. But for me, I just get nervous that it is sex, and then I'm like, "Okay, friend, are you trying to have sex with me or not?" And then sometimes they're like, "Yeah," and I'm like, "Okay, then I guess we're gonna have sex." Well, I think that really depends on the person. So, for example, right. if you are like that with 
every single one of your friends, then I think your friend circle or the group of friends that you're with kind of know that that's just how you are, that you just like to cuddle or like whatever. So it's not really sexual. Right. But if you were like that with like one person out of your friend circle, then I think that's where they can kind of get a mixed message and be like, oh, well, maybe they're trying to get it in. Right. And there was this guy, there was like two guys that I had in in Calgary and both of them were like, one of them is like one of my really, really good friends is in an open relationship. And once in a while, we'll just be in the same room and I'll be like, <laughs> you know, just like grab right onto that face. That was me attacking the microphone to act like I was grabbing onto your face. Um, and then the other one was just this really hot boy that's like about 10 years older than me. He's a nurse. He's so cool. He's bald and he's like a little bit ethnic. And that's kind of how I like them, which is weird. Somebody pointed it out to me one time. I was like, yeah, you're kind of right. Um, and you so, what? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> I think you just described. Yeah, Jamal. bitch. That, that is my description. But keep moving. Go. Keep yeah, just like a little, just like a little Awkward. bit. Awkward. I mean, you both are kind of just a little bit ethnic. Just a little bald and. Yeah. Oh, it's not you. Bitch. Um, so he wants. He's way, he's way too white. Um, Who, me? No, the other guy. I was gonna say I'm offended. No, um, and he he was just like we had such a chill time, and both of us were like, at the end of the day, we don't want a relationship. So like, let's just hang out, be friends, go for dinner. I'll blow you. I'll bl- he'll blow me, and then we'll have sex, and then we'll go for a hike the next day. You know, but like it just was become friendship, and then I got into a relationship, and he was like, I thought you said you didn't want a relationship, and I said, yeah, it just kind of happened. I think I kind of hurt his feelings. Well, yeah. Um. Which the was weird, but he was that. Yeah, it was just weird because he was the one that was always like, I don't want a relationship. But did you, in that moment, did you want a relationship, but just not with him? No, I did. I think I really, like, I, I loved our friendship and I love how it was going. And I didn't really think I wanted a relationship. And then I thought, like, I was just going to hook up with this guy that I hooked up with that became my boyfriend for a year and a half. Um, but so I didn't really want a relationship, but it just kind of happened. So it was like the right time, wrong place kind of yeah. vibe. Okay. Yeah. And then I didn't think it was going to work with this guy either because like this on our second day, um, the guy that I met after the person who was my friend with benefits that I dated for a year and a half, I told him the next time we hung out, hey, I'm moving in three months to Toronto. And he was like, okay, let's work it out. <laughs> I was like, fuck. Um, but then it worked out really. It was a great year and a half. But um, having gay friends is hard. Like, Did you grow up with having like a lot of queer friends in your life? No, so I have been surrounded with a lot of straight girlfriends um, ever since I was younger. And even now, actually, into my adulthood, uh, I don't really have very many, like, gay male friends that are mine. Um, Right. All of the gay male friends that I do have are by association. Right. Oh, wow. Um, I don't either. Do I want them? Yes. Um. When I was younger, I had a ton of gay friends. My only gay, my only friends were gay friends. Um, but like we touched upon in the ballroom scene episode is that I met these people at a very young age. And I felt like they kind of took me down the wrong path in life. And it made me despise them. And with that came the uncertainty, the confusion with regards to how do you be an adult in the LGBTQ plus community and make genuine friendships. Mm-hmm. Cause I'm like, I I've tried it on apps. I've, I've been on Tinder and said, you know what? Just friends. Do you know what I mean? All that kind of stuff. And it's like, but no do people really mean just friends. That's the thing. So like if, if I'm, if you find me on an app and my profile says just friends, guess what? I mean, just friends. But that's you. But the most, the majority of people, and I'm sure we've all seen the memes of like people with like their profile picture of them, literally with the spread eagle showing their hole being like, I'm just looking for friends. Like really girl. Agreed. (laughs) Agreed. But I like to think that I'm not that 1%. Right. Do you know what I mean? Like if if there, if I exist, there has to at least be another 5%. Do you know what I mean? So I like to think that, yeah, the, op- the, the the chances are that someone is out here still looking for friends. Whether or not it be a couple that's saying, you know what, we're just looking to expand our social circle, then cool. But I don't, like, I, I strongly believe that apps were not meant for the sole purpose of having sex. I feel like our community has turned them into the sole purpose of having sex. Mm. Um, 
So for me, I will use the app whichever way I want to. If I want to find a new co-host, bitch, I'll find a new co-host on Grinder. You <laughs> better fucking believe it. I think we found each other on. I think we found everybody. I think we actually did find all of our all of each other on Grinder. I think I met you on Grinder. I don't think I met you on Grinder. You I met you on Facebook. Message me on Facebook. I didn't message you. Oh. You messaged me, begging to suck my cock. I because it was three feet long. I highly doubt that because it was three. It's a three footer. <laughs> okay, let's get back on track. A the only thing, the only thing my, that... my only fans is now on sale for forty four ninety nine. <laughs> the only thing that I really that I find is that the community that we've kind of created in certain ways is like you go out, you get drunk with your friends, blah blah blah. And when I got here, I kind of you have that mentality to be able to go to more than one place. That's not just twisted nightclub. Um, it's like in, that's in Calgary. It's a very small um, average uh, bar. Hole in the wall. Hole in the wall. <laughs> Has a shower though um, on the dance floor. Like a glory hole? Uh, there are glory holes there too. There's a sex yes. dungeon. There's a sex dungeon there too. Yes. Oh, I don't think I've ever been in that. Yeah, it doesn't really. No, it's not really open for for most people. But it's just for the owner. Yeah, it's just for the owner that assaults people sometimes. Amazing. Um. So anyway, um, <laughs> I know. Calgary's stupid. Um, so I want to go to Calgary. <laughs> <laughs> so the one thing that I found really that I find really interesting is when I got here, I like I met a lot of my queer friends like at Woody's and all these other places, and like that's kind of how we connected all the time. And and then all of a sudden, your whole relationship as friends is all kind of wrapped around drinking and going out and getting high and doing all these things, and then like then what is the next part of your friendship? I Or go to Hanlon's, you know, like that's what you do. And so that's where I have a hard time with the queer community is it's like, it's not all, not everybody in them, but the people who I'm drawn to are also drawn to the, the same bad decision making as me. I really relate to what you just said, only because that was a huge issue that I had with my gay friends growing up was that, or no, I didn't have that issue at the beginning, because obviously I wanted to participate in it. Mm-hmm. Um, but as I grew up and I no longer found the value or the extreme value um, or the, the necessity in these things, um, then I wanted to long for, like, let's just hang out in the apartment, play fucking board games. Like, yeah, we can get wasted, but let's play Monopoly. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like, why do we have to always go to the club, always have to buy a new outfit, get fucking high as a motherfucker? Or go go to the beach, show off our bodies, and it's all about this materialistic world view. And that's just not me, right? Like, I am a t-shirts and sweater kind of guy. If I had to pick the most extravagant club or Netflix, I'm taking Netflix. Um, so that was always a, a weird thing between me and my friends was that, like, I would want to do something so chill, and they would want to party. They would want to do all this kind of stuff. And I'm like... Well, I guess I have to fucking party. Right. And you guys are older and wiser than me. Do you guys still get FOMO? What's that? I have never gotten FOMO. Fear of missing life. out. When you like when somebody invites you out and then you go, No, I'm actually tired, girl. And then like you sit there and you're like, Oh my god, I could have had so much fun. Um Yes and no. So I don't get I don't get that fear of missing out, but I do feel a little bit upset or embarrassed or degraded. When, like, for example, I'll be like, hey, let's play board games. And they're like, yeah, you know what? We're going to stay in. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden, they're at the club. Then it's like, it's not a fear of missing out. It's like, bitch, you fucked me over. Right. Yeah, that's gross. Yeah, so it's a fear of being fucked over, a fear of not being fun enough, a fear of being too old. Right. And I'm even having that challenge right now. I find I feel like this is just a session for me to learn about how to have friends. Um, is <laughs> <laughs> is that like I have these two like two really good friends they're both from Alberta and they one of them is like mixed race and then the other one is like very white like St. Albert white and you know what that means um, and they I always think whenever we're together we're like best friends in the entire world they're both queer they're like kind of muscular they're like kind of the cool kids and I always like oh my god we're best friends all of us are best friends and then like all of a sudden I'll see them all the time on Instagram out without me um, and like never invite me and then do like, live here? What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. they live here now, and like, and like, I just feel like I'm like a friend that like is like a convenient friend when I'm mm-hmm. there, but I'm not a person that they ever want to invite. And then there's just like I like made me really sad. Like I had a really couple sad days of being. Like, I have other friends for sure, but then sometimes you're just like reading, you're seeing this friendship was actually maybe to them just like a bar hangout friend, and you and like during quarantine now I kind of noticed that they were like not 
messaging me, not doing these kind of things. And it like really kind of showed who were my friends that I hung out with like six feet apart in a, in a park that I actually just talked to and hung out. And then the friends who actually were maybe just like bar friends. Do you find that bar friends are more common in today's day and age than genuine mm-hmm. friends when it comes to the queer community? I think so. I think because bar friends means it's like an easier friendship to maintain because you don't really have to, I think for lack of a better term, like nourish that friendship. You don't it's like have an to, open friendship. Yeah. You don't have to constantly like check in, hang out. You just see them every once in a while at the bar. But like, oh, hey, like we're going to the bar. You, you go in like that sort of thing. But it's almost very surface level. So I think people find that alluring because sometimes friendships can take a toll on you as well. Like friendships are at least some friendships are almost like having like a full blown, like romantic relationship. Right. Like some people um, need certain things from certain friendships as well. Right. So I think um, bar friends, it's just convenience. Yeah. And then it's also like, it's like sometimes you're like, Oh, are you only friends with me? Because like when I get drunk enough, I start buying shots for everyone. Yes, absolutely. You know, and then you just, and then you get so, like, I get so confused with those kind of things of being like, or am I like just a status thing? Like, I like that, like I have these friends and you want to meet these friends and that's the reason we're hanging out now. And that's what I found a couple of my friends doing. And I was like, bye. Like I, cause I'm just not, I'm never, I, I take friendship quite seriously. And as, and as we know here is like, I'm an all or nothing kind of person. Mm-hmm. Like I am either like, we're really good friends or I don't really want to talk to you because I'm fucking busy. Um, or I'll cut you out. And it's, and it's not in a mean way. It's just in a way that like, I, my feelings have been hurt a lot growing up and like living in like the household that I lived in. It was just like, this is the only way friendships work for me. It has to be like a hundred percent. There has to be a lot of trust involved. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I think I found that, you know, I found some queer friends that are like that, but even like some of my closest queer friends have like, have almost tried to blur the line with me of like, should we have sex right now? And even one of my best friends, uh, we were both in open relationships and he, um, we were outside for a cigarette and then our boyfriends, started making out in front of you uh well i was out i was out in behind the, you <laughs> by, behind us essentially they were like they were like cuddling on the couch because they were both very very tired um but then they weren't that tired i guess uh and then they started making out and then me and my friend came back into the house and they're like is it cool if we go have sex and then like with you or without you well i didn't really i because i don't I, I was tired i didn't and one of my friends i didn't didn't know if i i didn't really want to have sex with because i didn't want to fuck up that friendship mm-hmm. in any weird way so then instead me and my friend just watched our boyfriends have sex <laughs> okay well if that's not a fucked up friendship i think I but, and, but i is. think it like brought us closer together you know we watched our boyfriends fuck each other and then we he like fell asleep on my shoulder and then it was just like a very nice evening after like a crazy night. But see, so that's the thing. Something like that, if you're not that kind of person, can definitely, like that's almost like a recipe for disaster. They're like, that could fuck up not just your friendship with them, but like two separate relationships. Mm-hmm. But in your case, it brought you guys closer. Right. So I don't know. I guess it's all in like the players, I guess. I know we need to have a conversation. Me and him have to have a conversation this week. Not about that. Cause that thing happened like a year and a half ago, but I fucked up on something recently in our friendship and I'm really trying to be better at that. Mm-hmm. I'm really proud of myself actually. Like, I feel like, I feel like the couple of friends that I do have that are very close and like actually really trying to keep them close. Cause I moved so much as a kid. So I never really yeah. got to be like close to a lot of people. And it was really easy for me to like get rid of friendships, not get rid of them. Just like had to move to a new city and make me friends. Mm-hmm. And so, Hold on, yeah. with that. So let me ask you a question. So as an adult now, and as an adult, a queer adult, how do you go about making new friends? So like, let's say, for example, when you first came to Toronto, wait, did you know anyone when you first came to Toronto? Uh, just my roommate. Perfect. Like, and a couple other people, but like not anybody that was like super close. Is your roommate guy, girl, gay, straight? Girl. Perfect. Yeah. So then you had no queer friends. No, I knew like some people in the theater community, but like not, they weren't no like friends. friends. Yeah. So how did how would you recommend a queer adult go about making friends in 2020 or by the time this comes out 2024? <laughs> um, I think I think one of the nicest things to do sometimes is like I I found like one friend like I think how did I make friends actually you were probably the very first person I ever talked to on Grinder that I was like that I think at that point you were actually had on your thing looking for friends See? and I think for a really long time we were talking about hanging out. And then 
you probably tried to suck my dick. No, no, no. We never hung out. We never hung out. And then I kept being like, yes, let's do that. And then either you were busy or I was busy. You were working. I was working. Um, yes, I remember. And I was like, I was so, I was so intrigued by you because you were into theater. I obviously had a past in theater. Yeah. All that jazz. Yeah, yeah, I remember. Yeah. And then I was like, oh, we could be friends, blah, blah, blah. And then I think for some reason, some, I like once I moved, cause I was living on Jane Street and then I moved from there to my actual house that I lived in for a year and a half. I think it was just like dip, more difficult for us to get close enough to hang out yeah. which is like say la vie that's life but now we're here you know so like and I, and I think like that's one thing that this has even shown me is that like even our queer friendship or queer working relationship right now is like quite complicated because we're like badass bitches with saucy attitudes um and you know that we have we have very different differing appear, op- opinions about the queer community and how how we connect so it's like and we're also in this situation even blurring the lines between friendship and partners and like working together right because we have to be super own uh, open and honest in this room but we also have to think of like not the business perspective but the working relationship together as well you know so we're like being vulnerable and being like business suit people yes but i I think that it's 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 more difficult when it comes to friendships and or no just making pure friendship because like let's say for example if you, if, if us three went to fucking Bahamas right. next week, at the end of the day, we have a bond. We, we, we're fucking doing this podcast together. We, we, we talk about some of the most intimate things together. We have a bond. But now when you don't know people in a city, how do you go about making those friendships in mm. a day and age where people can say to you, yes, I want to be friends, but to them they don't mean friends they mean like friends of benefits or just even an open friendship a a friendship of possibilities right and even i think this weekend like when the reason i'm still hungover on day two like this is i didn't even drink yesterday i'm literally hungover from two days ago um i met this i met this guy who i was like you are literally the coolest person in the entire world can we be best friends and you he, said that? Yeah, I was like, I was like, we, I was like, you and me are going to be best friends. Like, I just like, I like knew it, and he was kind of getting annoyed, and he's like thirty five, and then I kept calling like his birthday. Our birthdays are one day apart from each other, and then I kept giving him the finger, and like we had so much fun, and then I kept calling him fifty. Anyway, we had, I had so much fun with him, and I was like, we can be best friends, and then we went into the washroom together, and he slapped each other. Off. No, we didn't, we didn't, but then he, he like, because I thought he needed something. And I was like, like, I thought he needed he to talk. Did. He needed a lot. And then he went to go, and he went to go kiss me. And I was like, and you're like, no, no, that's not what I wanted. And then that's what I kind of said. I was like, we can't like, cause I'm making out with the other guy over there, which I was, I was like, I'm making out with that guy. So I can't. And he was like, yeah, 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 yeah you're right. It's that would, that'd be stupid. And so I actually, I actually want to be best friends with him. And I just want to build pillow, pillow forts and watch uh, animated series with him. But see, that's how it always happens in my mind. Cause I'm like, I, 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 I am the most receptive to friends because I don't have many gay friends in today's day and age, right? right? But it's just like everyone that I meet, they're like, yeah, friends. And it's just like the moment they have the slice, the slightest inclination of a potential sexual opportunity, it now becomes sexual. Do you know what I mean? I'm like, for me, like I value friendships, right? So I'm like, when I say you're a friend, that means like we're like we're basically blood, right? You know what I mean, like I was raised as a young gay man to to believe that your your gay family and your gay friends are your new family. So I'm like, if I call you my friend, then you're my like you're my friend. I'm not calling you an acquaintance. I'm not calling you that person on the on the left hand side of the fucking street corner at the stop sign by Seven Eleven picking up fucking Slim Jims. Do you know what I mean, like bitch? You're my friend, right? right. And I would die for you. I'll kill for you. I like, wouldn't pay your rent, but I would. <laughs> I'd give you a couple dollars. Right. Um, so that for me is really weird, and I find that every time I try to make friendships, that's what happens. And do you think like once once let let's say you hang out with somebody on the first time or like third time, and then all of a sudden they like put their hand on your thigh and they're like, "Hey, I've been thinking about doing this for a long time," or they like kiss you or something like that? Do you do you stop do you stop them and be like, "Hey, no, I think this should just be like I just want to be friends," and then continue that relationship after or no. So, I haven't been presented with the 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 upfrontness of them saying, "Hey, I just wanted to kiss you." But yes, I have been presented with them like moving closer or being a little bit touchy-feely, stuff like that. But there was never any vocalized attraction. But yes, there was physical and yes, it was blatantly obvious. So now I will distance myself. I'll make it 
very known subliminally that no, this is strictly friendship. And nine times or 9.99999 times out of 10, that friendship doesn't exist anymore. Okay, so what I'm getting from what you're saying is that you see... A battered bitch. Uh, well, among other bitch. things. But um, the way you see it is, like, you can only be friends with some people, and then you can have, like, a romantic relationship with them. But you can't have both. Because I think, or at least uh, looking back on it, and a lot of my friends that have relationships, a lot of them have started like with them being close friends. And then I feel those relationships that have progressed into a romantic relationship are the ones that usually last the longest. Well, I'm not saying that because I'm, I'm very keen on if you are my lover, you are also my best friend. Right. Um, but you are, all, you are not my best friend and my lover. So you are, you are either my best friend and my lover, but you are not my best friend and my lover. So you don't think you could fall in love with your best friend? I'm sure I could, but then that person would be my lover and my best friend. Right. So what I'm trying to say is that you are my lover first, that, and s- support wise, you are also my 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 best friend. So mm-hmm. you're my lover, but support wise, you are also my best friend. Right. But you're not going to be my best friend, and sometimes fifty percent, three days out of the week, you are my lover. Do you know what I mean? So it's like you have like you and I are partners and I lean on you for everything. I count on you for everything. So you are my best friend. I tell you everything, 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 everything. But then that's usually a relationship. Thank you. But now I'm not going to have a best friend where it's like, we sometimes fuck. We sometimes share these intimate moments, but it's like, we are not truly lovers. It's just, it's the fun aspect of it. I don't, I don't, I don't understand that. I love how much of a Virgo you are. I'm, I'm, I'm that's the like definition. that's like such a that's such like a, a, a rule like it's such like a strict rule in your head of how it works dude, then, I'm, then i'm like how do you, i was like i have those rules too but like that one is like so strict dude, i am i am a Virgo like your brain ha- your, so like i because this is this is the thing it's like i feel like a lot of my friendships like i'm still a tr- like I, a lot of the people who i'm especially like with the queer men actually even the women in my life like i'm usually attracted to them in some in some sort of the way like not in a way that i need to like fist them always comes to fisting for me i don't know why um i like have to have sex with them but in a way that like i i want to be attracted to my friends and and i and i know that that sounds like the the line that's maybe where the lines get blurred and stuff like that but like i like having friends that i think are like beautiful inside and out well yeah i don't think that they're like when you say attraction i don't think it has to be sexual like i think in terms of any sort of um initial friendship there has to be some sort of um, I don't want to use the word attraction, but that's kind of what it is. Like, mm-hmm. let's say that you really enjoy this person because they're funny. Like, you're attracted to their funniness. You're attracted to, like, that part of them. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, there there has to be some sort of an attraction for anything, for any yeah. sort of relationship, romantic or non. Jho, have you heard about BetterHelp.com? BetterHelp is that that online therapy? Yes, it is. But not only is it therapy; it's therapy with a professional counselor that specializes in whatever you need. Whatever. Yeah, and wherever you are worldwide. Okay, so how does it work? Okay, so you log on to BetterHelp.com. So that's H-E-L-P dot com, and if you put slash barbecue, you get ten percent off. Amazing, because I have no money, and I need to save a dollar. And that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to make it convenient, professional, and affordable. Okay, Mm, but then I'm not really sure about the therapy thing. So if I'm talking to these people, and I'm just not vibing with them, what happens? They'll set you up with a new one, girl. For free. For free. For free. And that's the thing I love about this. BetterHelp has helped me out through so many things in the past couple of months, And I think everybody should try it. So texting, video, and phone conversations. Yeah, and all you have to do is go to betterhelp.com slash barbequeer to get 10% off your first month. You know what? I'm going to try this right away. I love that. Because over 1 million people are doing it. So why not make it 1 million in one? Yes. I love it. Take care of yourself today so you can be a better you tomorrow. Oh, okay. We just love them so much. We want them to take care of themselves. Mm. And 
going off like how I meet, I, I don't even think I finished answering your question, but like, uh, like the way I meet people is like, so, like if I'm going out to the bar or something like that, like I'll just ask people if like, like it, for me, the nice, the nice thing was is because I work in a very like queer, my, my job is quite, is quite queer. It makes it super easy for me to, it was easier for me to make friends in the queer community that were like part, also part of theater. So then all of a sudden it was just like, we already had a commonality of theater. Mm -hmm. And then it'd be like, Hey, do you want to go for a drink as like friends, bring some of your friends along? That's also a really good step to make friends is if they, if you ask them, if you're on grinder or something to bring their friend, like if they have any other friends to bring oh. along, because then it's like, then there is no, it's like, it's not like a one-on-one. -on -one. It's, it's not more of yeah. like a, it's not a, Oh, surprise. Like, like you thought we were coming as friends and now I'm going to kiss you. It's like, well, now there's four of us here and hopefully you don't already fuck these two guys and wow. it'll be good. So what advice would you give to someone that doesn't have that same luxury of working around a lot of queer individuals? Um, that's like question. myself. I know. I, I, I like, and you, and you don't really like going out to the bar, right? I, I don't. And, and so, well, wait, wait, let me, let me clarify that. Sorry. So, so I work in a very homophobic, what's the word I'm looking for? Not anti-male. Hmm. Anti, not anti-Semitic. <laughs> um, like alpha male. Alpha male. Thank you. So I work in a very homophobic alpha male kind of environment, and I don't, I, I don't mind going to the bar. My issue is that I'm not the kind of person to go to the bar alone, and because I don't have gay friends or queer friends, the next option is I either go to the bar alone or I go with someone that I don't want to go with. So then the next option is I'm just not going. Um, so now, how how would you recommend that I find friends? Because I've I've done the online thing, right? I've 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 put up posters across the town <laughs> looking for friends, right? Missing dog. But do you have a do you have a thing that you like to play? Like, do you have like a sport you like to play, or like a? Yeah, like, but they're not going to bring in queers. I mean, in, in certain places, in certain places, there will like there's like gay do you know what? Like we did gay league. Like there's gay like leagues, there's like a gay yeah. football league. There's a gay there's a gay kickball league. There's I play gay dodgeball. So see, that's I don't know if that would work for me either because like I played football all through high school and right. university. I feel like if I was to go into like a gay league, it's not going to be the football that I want to play. What do you, right. The, the ignorance in me is uh, yeah, but it's not going to be like full contact suits. Like I play, I played professional fucking right. university football. So like even even tag football to me is not football. Right. Right. So like if I was to go and it's just like half ass football, I'm gonna be like fuck this like. But, but the whole point isn't said, to play really good football. Yeah, it's not about it being like super, it's a socialization. Kind yeah. Of, yeah, like the whole point is you guys are all there for one common thing, which is to play this thing that you enjoy. And possibly and fuck you, afterwards. Well, possibly because you all happen to be gay. Yeah, but also I think I think sometimes that I even I even do this to myself in my own head is that like I almost give like um, I give up on like because of in the gay dodgeball team for example like my dodgeball team were all whores. Okay, see, I'm see? still friends with them all. See what I mean? But they're all whores, right? So I had a I had a very hard time with how many of that, like not hard time, but I was like, everybody was hooking up and I tried to like fit in. Oh, that's sorry. I was like, what the fuck was that? Uh, that was my phone. Um, and I tried to I tried to like fit in and do all this kind of stuff. And then after a while, I was like, actually, you guys, I kind of just want to go to the beach with you. And I just want to like talk and blah, blah blah and some of them were like oh never mind and then others of them were like that's cool and like i made a really good friend on, on dodgeball his name is johnson and he's cool and he works at the i can't tell you where he works but he works at a museum and it is so nice we just talk about art so you're saying just kind of just go through it and kind of just through 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 the bullshit you will find one yeah okay friendships are fucking being an adult and making friends is fucking hard well, I think the only way that you can really make friends as an adult is usually the number one is usually through work. Right. And obviously, you said through your work, it's a little difficult. So you obviously can't be making friends there. Um, but because we spend 80% of our time at work, that's usually mm -hmm. as an adult where you find them. And then after that, I would say maybe like if you take like a class or like, you know, how people do like they go to the gym or like they do yoga or they do whatever those people usually make friends through that. that sounds so sexual to me <laughs> no yeah no. Like, bitch like, what everyone's at the gym low-key cruising but i think you can always say no and that's the thing that i that i that i sometimes so forget this. what so at my workplace there there's like a handful of us literally at, at most three four of us that i know that are like gay 
um, minus the transgendered ones, all that kind of stuff. Um, one of them, I was like, hey, like, I saw him on Grinder. Let's hang out. Like, blah, blah, blah. Like, we're fucking, we're like, we, we work here. We basically live here. Did he block you? No. So he had came over, brought beers, all this kind of stuff. And then it went from a friendship to him trying to fuck. And at that moment, I felt the need to be completely blatant. because Not blatant, but like honest. So I wasn't disrespectful or anything, but it was like, I have to work with you. So I'm going to be respectful, but I'm going to tell you what it is I'm looking for. So I told him like, this is what it was. And mind you, his locker is adjacent to mine. Like, I kid you not, you guys can see this mirror. It's that far. And he didn't talk to me for a nice six months. And even now, like, he will say hello, but like, we don't talk. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like, even, even after I make it so blatantly clear, like, I don't want to fuck. Right. But how did you go about it? Like, did you bruise his ego? Did you say it like nicely? Like, so, how, like, paint us let me, let the me, picture. Let me paint you this Picasso, this Picasso piece of artwork. So, at first, I grabbed red paint. Smeared it all over his left butt cheek. Uh-huh. No, I'm kidding. Um, so I like literally we, we we had conversation on Grinder. Like, hey, so like, how do you feel with the job? All this kind of stuff. Like, cool. Like, basically just talking work, 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 work. And so he he's been working there longer than I have. Um, and at the time I was going through a lot of stress. So it was like, hey, like, come over, let's talk. Like, why, why are we having this conversation over Grinder? Blah blah blah. Come over, let's talk. But we already had the conversation of what are you looking for on here. And I made it strictly clear, like, just friends, blah, blah, blah. So he comes over with, like, a fucking two, four pack of beer. And then slowly but surely is itching closer and closer right. and closer to me. And it got to the point where I was like, are you trying to kiss me? I literally asked him, like, are you trying to kiss me? And then he went in for the kiss. Right? So then I let him hit my lips, like, pucker, because I didn't want to just push him off. So I let him contact and I'm like, honestly, I'm like, I'm strictly just looking for friends. And then it was like, that was it. Like he he stayed for a bit for like one more beer, but there was like it was a lot of tension at that point. And then from that moment on, it was it was dead. And I'm like, what else could I have done differently? Right. And I don't and I don't know, right? Because I think um as we talked about earlier, like I'm I have like I do have those friends that like that kind of happened with. Mm-hmm. And then I had a conversation with them and then they were like, oh, it's not it won't happen again. And we continue to be friends. So some people are just like weak ass men who can't take the whole fact of like that friendships are like, especially I find in the queer community, that friendship is to me anyway, is just as important as sex. You know, like having those connections and having those communities is like a really fucking important thing for queer people because we were like built off community. Like that's how we kind of survived for a long period of time. So I just, I hope that some people, but then also the way we did survive at 1.2 was hypersexualized, right? So I think there's that balance of these two survival techniques that we use that kind of got, that kind of got smishy smashed together, right? And like now it's that complication of how do we actually see each other as queer, as queer people without trying to t- rip each other's clothes off. So I, I want to touch upon your hypo, hypersexualized comment because I've always said that the queer community is hypersexualized. Yeah. I feel like what what is extreme in 2020 is that the world, for once, is hypersexualized. Right. Right? Like, it's not just queers. It's not just men. It's everybody is hypersexualized. Um, so do you find that that is making it more difficult? We live in a day and age where everything is sexualized. Se- sex- being sexual beings is applauded. It's, it's encouraged. Do you know what I mean? Like, everyone is being so sexually spoke outspoken in today's day and age where it's like do you feel like our hypersexualism or ness is gotten to a point where it could be a little bit extreme i think so i i don't know about you that like so like just for certain things i remember so like i'm not a big hooker upper i don't like go on grinder and, and fuck people that's why i usually am fucking my friends i think um and <laughs> and this guy and like recently i've been i was fooling around with this one guy that like we've been talking for like six months on the internet and then finally i went over to his house and it was like i like we didn't really ever talk on the internet where like he would be like show me a dick pic and then be like come over and suck it but i when i get over to somebody's house i still am like hi like what's your name like how are you like 
what else is new? How what, like what do you think of these things? Like, and I'm very it's like that's where bitch I'm, get out. Hey, no, it's really nice. Like sometimes I just want to talk and like I want to like have, suck the dick and leave. No, I, sometimes you just want to be like, and you know, like I could see in his face this like uh like auto drive happen where he was like where he was like oh no we can't be talking right now he wasn't like, ready. You, he's like you need to be just sucking my dick and i need to fuck your ass like that was that you is could just so see, me you could see in his eyes and i was like so like are your parents still together i i don't remember what i actually that asked. is so and me. he like, was like <laughs> suck my dick and i was like oh come on god forbid you offer me a drink like bitch no like i already drank before i got here like, i know that's and then but the weird thing like he was even watching a, a tv show and i was like what tv show are you watching and then he's like he's don't just background he's like Stop look at the stop looking at the TV and suck my dick. And I was like, Kate, dude, I just want to talk to you for five seconds. My jaw's getting sore. Anyway, he didn't want it. So now he <laughs> keeps asking me to come over because I'm I guess pretty good at sucking dick. But uh uh I I, I think it was like weird for me. I don't I don't know if I got the same thing out of it mm-hmm. that I wanted. You know, like I didn't like usually when I'm sleeping with people, I have like a little bit of a connection with them and I don't think I just want to get my ass pounded. That's boring. You should. Like, I want my ass to be pounded for sure, but I don't want it. I don't want it to be pounded and not have a good conversation during or after or before. Fair enough. I um, guess it just depends on what it is that you're looking for. Right. Right. Amen. But what I wanted to know is, do you guys find it hard to maintain gay queer relationships while you are in a relationship? Like, does your partner end up trying to limit? the amount or the extent of the relationships that you currently hold or that you may potentially make in the future. Like, are they getting jealous of the, of the friends that you're friends with? Yeah. Um, okay. I have a story. Uh, I just have so many stories, but this story is not about me. So I'm definitely not going to say any of these people's names, but I have a couple of friends who like, they had a, like, uh, my friend had a best friend that he, that he lived with. Then his boyfriend started coming over and his boyfriend and his best friend started having sex behind his back for a year. Um, and then uh, he broke up with him when he found out that they were sleeping together and never talked to his friend ever again. So now he has this like complex that he has a really hard time with his new boyfriends or new partners, friends, or even his own friends, trusting them if they're going to have sex Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Like, so there, it's so like, like that was a trust thing for me. I don't really have that big of a deal. I'm like, I'm like, I mean, if you're going to, I feel like you're very easygoing. So you're I just am. like, Ma, if you guys want to have sex, like I'll just, I'll chill here. I'll just watch. Let me know how it goes. <laughs> so now if that guy was your partner though, would you understand if he said to you like, Hey, no gay friends? Um, no, I wouldn't. And I think that even with my last partner, we had a, we had a hard time with how much I liked going out and not even like, not even that I wanted to go, not even like wanting to go out, just like going and sitting and having a drink or going over to a friend's house. And he's like, I just want to stay at home. And I was like, well, dude, you can stay at home. He's like, yeah, but then you're going to come home and you're going to be drunk and that's going to be annoying. And I was like, well, like you knew this when we started dating, that I like to drink when I, like, I like to drink, especially on my date. If I have like three days off in a row, I'm going to take, I'm going to drink at least one of those days. I'm young. Yeah, yeah. Um, and 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 he like and he he was like he really started resenting some of my friends for them being like party friends. Hmm. Jeho, that's weird. Um, yeah, I think I've had that happen to me actually in the past where I've been dating a guy and like this person that was supposed to be my best friend, um, slept with my boyfriend not once, not twice, multiple times. Um, so that's, I mean, I think. Uh so weird for some reason i just had this picture in my head of who it might be but you know i'm just gonna i'm just gonna leave it alone because maybe you should i'm not i'm not i'm not petty not today at least you know any these episodes go out on a sunday so it's god's day so let's keep it moving um so i kind of do have that sort of i I, it's not like i I almost think i always have it in the back of my mind because obviously it happened to me but it's not something that i'm constantly thinking of like i feel in my relationships like i'm very Like, there's enough communication between me and my partners that uh, if anything were to happen, like, I would know. Right. Um, That being said, now, obviously, uh, everything that I just said happened, like, many years ago. But nowadays, um, a lot of the friends that I do have are, like, they're couples. So um, the the majority of my, like, gay friends um, are all coupled with each other. So we just kind of do couple things. Like orgies or uh, no, like oh. like dinner parties, like group swingers, play. group no. play, group play, no, none, none. Are you sure? 
I am positive. You guys don't you, swing? What's the whole point of having friends if you don't swing? Are they gay? They're gay. Weird. Like lesbians? No. <laughs> I'm so confused. So you have you have we go male to the, gay friends we go and to you're the, not swinging? No. I'm we, proud of you. We go to the beach. We have dinner parties. We're fucking the bushes. We go camping. Oh, no, in the bushes. Fucking in the bushes. Do you do all that for like work or something? I'm confused. Okay, I'm done with this bit. <laughs> no, y'all. Do you know what? And, Gay friends can coexist without fucking. And Where? they can. And in Wuhan? No, my God. <laughs> I, I agree. I do think I do think it's China. possible. I have had I've had some I've had some hard times trying to find that balance with certain friends. But overall, there are a couple of them that I've been quite successful at. Even if there's like a couple of awkward moments where it like almost happened, it's like we like had a conversation. I was like, we shouldn't do this. And like even one of my really good friends, like we uh uh we were at a we were at a club. And this guy that I was kind of seeing, uh, my friend was quite drunk and I was bringing my friend to the bathroom because he was not feeling great. And uh, <laughs> and he was, I was like putting him next to the toilet. I was like, are you okay? Everything okay? And then this guy that I used to hook up with knocks on the door and whips out his dick. Um, and because he thought that he, I guess he said that he thought I gestured to him. Um, like, read the room. I was like, read the room, dude. This guy's puking. But my pukey drunk best friend that wasn't puking, um, latched onto his dick like it was going to save his life and nice. then and then i was like i was like dude like do you really want to do this together he's like uh-huh yeah and i was like okay so we did it for like maybe like a minute and a half and then he looked at me and i looked at him and we just started hysterically laughing <laughs> and this guy was like what are you laughing at my, my dick's awesome but i was like it's not you dude it's just we don't do we're not we're not people that suck dick together so it's good for us to kind of like giggle about it and feel it and we're like oh maybe we can just be friends and we'd like try that we try we, like you know we try to suck dick together but friends who suck dick di- together don't actually stay together always always suck dick together <laughs> i don't know what this analogy is. not all friends that suck dick together are listening yeah um anyway so let's say for example if i was your boyfriend yeah. and you told me that story i will confidently full-heartedly with my left testicle and my kidney, <laughs> tell you, bitch, that is no longer your friend. Um, Even if we weren't dating at this point? If you and I were dating? Like, if you and me were dating right now. And that was your friend. that And that happened a year ago, you would say no. I don't care. No. Do, not, do not go to the club with him unless I am there. Right. Um. So, how I look at it is, I'm like, if you are in a committed, monogamous relationship, um, and you have friends that you know live a promiscuous lifestyle or a very free lifestyle and sexually open lifestyle that and have the ability to put you in situations where sexual things may happen um, and you know yourself that you could be a sexual being, things like that, then yeah, I'm going to expect you to remove yourself from that um, because I would do the same, right? Like, let's say, for example... I can be very sexually inclined. If I go to somebody's house and he, and his ass is fat and he puts it in my face, I will eat it. So <laughs> I'm not going to go to somebody's house as a man in a relationship with a guy that has a fat ass and a hope to God that he puts his ass or doesn't put his right. ass in my face. Right. You know what I mean? Because I, I know I'm going to eat it. Right. <laughs> right. Right. And I, and I find, and I find that like there is that, there is that challenge sometimes of like, of, and and I think that's where the queer community is kind of at in this weird place. And like even even the straight community, actually, funny story about straight people. Sorry, everyone, you can skip this part if you don't want to listen about straights. But what is straight? <laughs> these two people, I love them so much. They come into my restaurant all the time. I saw them yesterday, and we finally exchanged numbers. I'm so excited because it was my last day there, so I was so happy. Anyway, I thought that they've been dating for three years, like in a romantic relationship, like making each other fucking dinner, blah, 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 blah. They are just friends who fuck. And they're like 50 and 40, and they're like so cool. And they were like, we both just know that we're really good friends, but we also like to fuck, and he has three kids, and I don't really want Guarantee to you deal with these kids. Married. What? No, yeah. not, neither of them are married. They like he got divorced. Like I've been over. Like I went over to their house. I dropped them off at home. Like he lives alone. She lives alone. Like she got divorced four years, like four or five years ago. Like they don't. They're just chill. Like they're very. And the thing is, is like sometimes we have to look at these things. Like like what he said that I thought was really really smart. And what I think sometimes um, I think what will happen to me is he's like I was married for twenty five years. 
I did that. Like I did yes. the whole marriage thing. Yes. And now I like did that commitment for 25 years and it's not something I want again. And that's what I was going to say. Some, something comes with age, right? Like you, even if you're 14 and you've, you've done it all for 20 years and now you're 34. Right. Something comes with age and it's wisdom. Right. Um, you've been through it. You've experienced it. You've experienced the trials and tribulations where it's like, you know what? You appreciate the small things, right? And I don't feel like majority of today's generation has had that opportunity right. because we live in such a fast-paced environment. For sure. And then, everything's so much more, like every relationship is more complicated now. Let's say, for, think, let's say for example, let's say for example, if you know somebody that was in a relationship from like, we're in 2000, what, 2020? Let's say you know someone that was in a relationship from like, 2010 yeah and they now break up what's the first thing that they say i'm not looking for a relationship i just want to have fun right because times have changed and people want to ex experience what it is that everyone's experiencing now and it's what well, the only thing that we're experiencing now is covid19 <laughs> and sexual liberty right it is what it is yeah and and i and i think kind of like to finish this episode off like i i and we're not I, for me anyway i'm not, I'm not done talking about sex i'm not i'm not done talking about sex so I bought condoms yesterday. I'm just kidding. Go. <laughs> All I'm saying is that, like, I, I, that I really do believe that, like, relationships are getting more complicated, and that doesn't just mean relationships with your partner, but it means relationships with your friends because now there's even like more accessibility to so many different people all around the world or all around in your communities, and we're finding new ways of like complicating our friendship. Also, queer people have dealt with experience with a lot of trauma, like for the most part, and there is something that's that's that is inherently traumatic about coming out that that has happened to all of us in one point or another. So trust and understanding um, in the queer community becomes more and more complicated. And I think that raises why there's so many, for me anyway, why there's so many blurred lines and why there's even like trust issues and friendships and these kind of things is because we're still just, we're at a point where we're still trying to figure ourselves out. And one thing that my therapist said to me that I thought was really keen and really smart for a straight man to say is he was like you didn't really figure out who you were like as a queer person until you were about like for me like i think i was like 16 when i like knew that i liked the zabumafu brothers more than just dads like i wanted i wanted them to like fuck me like you know like eiffel tower high five um and that's when i kind of figured it out because i was like one of the first wet dreams i ever had and i was like oh oh okay it's like I had that was first 16 years and I didn't get to be 100% authentically figuring out myself. And then like it wasn't until four or five years later until I finally told everybody. So then so then, you know, so then it was like now I'm living this authentic life and now I'm discovering like discovering who I am in this body that I didn't really get to live in before. So that's like a trauma thing that queer people go through. I was yeah. like, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Um J-Ho, anything you want to, last thoughts? Anything you want to get off your chest? Anything you want to get off your testicles? Your pubic hairs, if you didn't already shave them off. Um, it's COVID. Like, what do you mean? You have to, no, and it's summertime. You have, you have to, like, stay fresh. My balls are perfectly um, Smooth? manicured. Really? Um, Ooh, bitch. Like, perfectly? Always. What do you favor? Just do me a favor. Just lay them on the table so we can inspect. This is not that kind of friendship. What do you, what do you use? We just had a conversation about open friendships and how you can have these kind of friendships. Well, I'm not going to just spew my balls on the table. No, don't put your balls on the table. Just tell me how you shave them without cutting them at all. Oh, with a razor, girl. Wow, you're brave. Talent. No, okay, no, no. Actually, I speaking about friends. Um, my one friend who is our age, like, yeah. just found out that you can literally take a razor to your balls, and it's like the easiest thing, and it like. It try it literally. It's just you just shave them like you would your face. What about your hole? What about it? Like how do you get to your hole? Oh, my hole's perfectly fine. Doesn't need to be. But you don't have. Yeah, it's not very hairy. I'm not gonna ask you questions like I've already eaten your hole, but. Oh my god. I'm sorry, but I was asked. But no. But do you have like, any last questions about friendship? No, but for no. sorry, wait. But seriously, so like if like if you have some hair on your hole, can you razor your hole? I mean, I'm sure you could. I don't because that would be ridiculous. I feel like that would be easier than your balls because no. your balls are kind of rigid, you know? No, the ridges actually, I don't know what. They go away. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Kind of. Try it. Okay, I'll get back to you next week. Next week, we're going to talk about 
<gasps> Shaved balls. No, we should talk about um, personal appearance and manicuring. Yeah. But and- that, that would mean that we have to save this episode until the very end of the thousand episodes that we recorded because this is going to go into 2021 you have to delete that part right there can you actually mark this and delete that because, why because i want people to think that we that, that we, we just keep, record this that we just recorded there delete, that's, delete, why delete, that's why i didn't that's why i didn't talk delete, about my birthday delete 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 go um just finish this off here all i want to say is that friendships are fucked and <laughs> the people that are in the friendships are even more fucked and honestly you just kind of have to find a balance of what works best for the people in it and that also goes for um a relationship as well absolutely and i always say that like i I wrote this line in a play one time it was like hey you it would be weird if somebody came to your house for or they went on vacation with no luggage right so it's like why are we ever judging people for their emotional baggage you have to bring it with you i don't i I don't agree thank you I definitely don't agree on judging someone for their emotional baggage. Um, But what I will say when it comes to friendships and those enticing people and and, uh, enticing people um, for or that are looking for friendships. um, Be yourself. Understand that if you are looking for a friendship, there's nothing wrong with looking for a friendship. I feel like in today's day and age, and I've experienced it time and time again, we are like, we are no longer the norm. We are no longer the, the majority. So people often look at us for being on apps, things like that. Look at us as like, we are, we are, we are, we are abnormal. We are now the minority looking for friendships, things like that. Understand that. Or that you're like a challenge to like jump over. Yeah. You can, you could be looking for friendships and the other person could be looking for, uh, for friends with benefits. But at the end of the day, everyone, the key is to be open and to not shy behind your openness. So if you're going to be open, don't be open, but yet still mean something else. So if you are going to say, yeah, I'm down for friendships, don't surprise someone with a friends of benefits situation. Just say it, guys. It's 2020. Let's all just be completely comfortable with what we are looking for because at the end of the day, something about the LGBTQ plus community is that we are looking to embrace and celebrate. Keyword, celebrate who we are as individuals. And a part of that comes our desires and our interests so if you want friends if you want lovers if you if you want to like a ltr long-term relationship if you want to fuck buddy fucking say it embrace it love it enjoy it go for it achieve it and fucking put it on your facebook status and on your linkedin because bitch <laughs> it's 2020 yes and i think that's i think that's it i don't think i want to ever talk to, I, th- I think i'm gonna Get rid of all my friends and just be friends with you. Wait, guys. sorry, one more thing. So my PayPal is I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm actually hiring. Um, so I have like a show coming up. Um, I'm looking for four exotic dancers. Um, but you have to pay me to be at the show because it's all about exposure. Um, pay me four thousand dollars a piece. You'll be performing for myself at my birthday party. My birthday is in like September fifteenth. Um so this yeah. has been uh, another episode yeah. of Barber Queer. Big dicks only. Uh, my name is Jay Northcott. Fat asses only. And I'm J.O. Fat asses only. And I'm Alexander Jamal. And you know, bitch, you know, if you ain't no, then you ain't got no idea. And you know, like, bitch, like. Toodles. <laughs> Bye. Bye.